Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So it's really important to learn about soil life and soil health. So I'm going to show you five simple soil tests that you can do in your garden. And all you need is a trowel and a couple of jars. So keep watching and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so the first test that we're going to do are just involve your sensors. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the soil. We're going to peel back any mulch layers. What we're going to do is we want to see the, the soil itself. What we're doing is we're just doing some observation. So we're looking at the soil. What colour is it? That's what we, one of the signs that we're looking for. Is it a dark, rich material? Rich material. What's the life like in the soil? So here I can see worms. I can see different types of worms as well. I can see red wrigglers. I can see ordinary earthworms. I can see a few. What else can I see in here? So this is your first test. You look, you feel your... And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a handful of soil and I'm going to bring the soil up to my nose and I'm going to give it a good sniff. What does it smell like? Now this soil smells nice and earthy. There's no offensive odour to it. I mean, I've added manure to this. I've added chicken manure to this over the time, over the years. Uh, horse manure has been added to this, but there's no offensive odour to it. One of the things that you'll notice about when you've got a lot of waterlogged soil and especially with some damp, really solid uh, clay soils is when you expose the soil like this and you take a sniff, you can smell the soil. It smells um, sour. So you've got to, this is one of the things that you're, you're going to be testing for and you're going to be looking out for is that does your soil smell? Does it, does it cause offence? When you're looking at the soil like this, is it a dark, rich colour or is it a, a dirty grey colour? Is it sandy colour? You're going to get, take your gloves off and feel it. What does it feel like? How does it feel like to the touch? I mean, what I'm getting here is apart from the bits of wood chips, but the soil feels fluffy. It feels nice to touch. It doesn't feel sticky. It doesn't feel hard. So get your hand, get the soil in the hat. And it should make a, um, a ball quite easily, but it should also break apart really easily as well. So these are simple. So these are three simple tests you can do. You haven't spent any money. You're just coming out and having a look. You're looking, you're feeling, you're smelling the soil and seeing what it feels like, what it touches like. These are tests that soil scientists still rely on. What's the soil life like? Smell this. Come on. Give it a smell. What does it smell like? Soil. Does it smell bad? It smells like soil. <laughs> it smells like soil. So it's not smelling bad, it just smells like soil. So it's not an offensive odour, is it? It's not a dirty odour, it's not a dirty smell, is it? Does it smell horrible? It smells bad. It smells bad. It smells like soil. <laughs> it smells like soil. Okay, so like I showed you, you're going to, here, look, there's another test. And just clump the soil together, it should just fall apart again. And it's, these are basic tests that soil scientists are doing. You can do these yourselves. So if the soil was smelling sour, the thing that it'll suggest to you is that there's a lack of oxygen. So one of the things that we need to do is get oxygen into the soil. Now, I'm not an advocate of digging, but sometimes it's important to deep rip the soil to break hard pans. Sometimes it's important to use a broad fork and get some oxygen into that and just crack the soil gently. I mean, if you haven't got um, a broad fork, an ordinary garden fork, just dig, stab it in rock back and forwards just so the soil cracks and that'll just allow uh, air to get into the soil if you can't get oxygen down into the soil you're not going to get any life in there it's not going to be an environment that sustains life if the soil doesn't look dark and rich it looks gray it looks uh, a sandy color it doesn't clump together the way i showed you and then fall apart again the way i showed you what it's suggesting is there's a lack of organic matter so you need to improve it by adding more and more organic matter and you can add, I mean, look at the mulches that I use. This is heavily mulched with wood chips, but you can use all kinds of stuff. Compost, um, grass clippings, leaves, just manure. I mean, there's nothing like uh, large animal manure to get, to build soil structure. I don't think that there's anything like it. What are we doing? So we're doing some soil, we're doing some soil tests. We're doing some sciencing. So now look, I said I don't dig, 
But here, look, I'm digging. So all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a, a shovel full of soil, or a spit full of soil, oh, and I'm going to drop it into there. And look, 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 stop, 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 stop. Now what we want to look, do is we want to look at the soil profile. You can, here you can see there's a lot of organic matter at the top and this bottom layer is still very much clay. Now when I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the way the clay is, I'm, I can tell that this is improved massively compared to what it used to be. I can see worm eggs in there. Look, there's a worm cocoon there. So there's life here. So you come and help me count the worms. So in a spit full of soil, a healthy soil should have at least minimum about eight worms. So let's see how many worms we can find in this soil. So come on, help me. Yay, I like One, this. One. Two. Come on, help me. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. five. There was one here. Uh, six. Five. Uh, six. Seven. Eight. Where are we going to put the worms then? We're not going to put them anywhere. Oh. How much do we have? Nine. Ten. So, where. That's one thing that I'm quite pleased about. We're beating what um, what the recommendations are in terms of soil, in terms of... 11, 12. 12. We're beating what the soil, uh, healthy soil suggests. 13, 14. So look, we've got 14, 14 um, worms. And I'm sure if we, 15. If we, if we look a bit more, we'll find more. So we do that test again. Look, hold, clump it together, and then it just falls apart again. Yeah, 16. Look at that, see? This soil's beautiful. It's two times in the water. Here, look, there, there's a demonstration of the soil profile. So you've got the deep, you've got the heavy clay at the bottom, and as you get up, you can see more and more organic matter being added to it, whereas at the top, it's just wood chips and compost. Yeah, how much worms do we have by yeah? 16, 17? So we found 17 worms in that shovel full of soil. Now that to me is 18. a good 18. That to me is a good sign of healthy soil. Now we've got a shovel full of soil from this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other side of the bed. Now one of the ideal ways of doing this, just take a trowel and use a trowel to do it. The trowel. trowel is the one without the fork. You go to different points in the garden and you just take a trowel full of soil. I mean, the soil over at this side of the garden is much heavier clay. So add a, so you can see this soil, you can see the difference between the soil over there and the soil over here. It's massively different. So I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna take some soil from this side. I'm gonna take a trowel full from over here as well. And I'm going to mix it all together. I'm just going to get this soil into this bucket so it's a bit easier to deal with. Now, you should do this test at least once a year. What I want to do is I want to note, note the differences between what's happened over, over the, and build up a trend. Is my soil improving? Now we've noticed uh, 18 worms in that handful, in that spit full of soil, and that's a massive improvement. I can, I can remember from last year, I think last year we were at about 14. So that's a big improvement for me. Yeah, Dave, pour some soil, pour this soil into there for me. I want to sift it out. Okay, you sift it then. You sift it, I'll pour the soil. Come on, come down this side. So you, you sift it, I'll pour the soil, come on. Come on, sift it. So what we're trying to do is we don't want any big rocks, any big bits of wood. Go side to side to 
causes a problem in our results. Just drop it into that hole. Drop it into that hole. Come on, again, back. Back to it, back to it. Okay. Yeah, you can do the next bed. Okay, chuck that away. Chuck that away. Gentle. So this one's Thebes, you're gonna do the you're gonna do the other bed, okay? Okay. So Thebes, come here. Get your jar. You can't have a jar. Yeah, yours that's what I said, yours is gonna be the other bed. Okay, so open it So now these are sifted up sifted up soil. I mean there's still some bits of organic matter that we can see in there, there's bits of stones. So we're tr gonna try and take those out the best we can. So bring your jar to you. Now I want you to fill that much soil into it. So probably about just about a third. So can you fill a third, third of this with soil? Okay. Get your hand in. Get your hand in. But don't try not to get any rocks or anything like that. Okay. Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is a bit done more. Yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Right, do it nicely. That's it. So there we go, that's about a third of soil in that jar. Um, let's put this soil back and we'll move on to the next bed and do the same thing with the next bed. So we're going to do the same thing on this bed. So we're just going to peel back the mulch. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to just take a spit full of soil. And we're going to drop it in there. Okay, you start counting the worms, you two. Khadija, have you put those worms back? Uh, yeah. Oh, they're still too long. Okay, put those worms back. It's much easier to see on here where this original soil is and the difference that we're building and how we've got the compost layer at the top um, or the organic matter layer at the top. And we just keep building like that. There we go. It's looking much nicer. Every year, this soil, this bed looks actually... Look, I'm really impressed with this bed. It's looking nicer and nicer each year. I think this is this is my best bed. Six, I think. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So just from there, we're at, we're at fourteen worms. And that's m way more than what's what's recommended. And I saw loads of worms that will help yeah that counts 15. 15 where we're sort of hitting double what what's recommended to have for good soil uh, so i've got my again i've got my soil from here 16, 16 that's a big one you missed so we're just getting some soil from this side as well and this side of the bed has always has never been as good as the other side of the bed it's always been a bit heavier clay so we need more mulch. One of the things about the gradient of this garden, everything gets pushed over to that side. So this corner, whatever we put mulch on, it naturally flows over to that side. So uh, I'll get one more trowel full from over this side. Get your sift. Get that. Get your sift. See, this was my original soil. This was the type of original soil that I started on. This yellow heavy clay, and it's almost like subsoil. So I've got still got some of that yellow stuff in my beds. And that's what I, that's pretty much my whole garden. That's what my whole garden was. So I do have traces of that stuff still here. Okay. Get these guys out of here, put them back. Okay, have you got the sieve? See, there's loads of worms, let's put them back. There you go. One second, that's it. Okay, go and put it in that hole. Worms out. We don't want these worms getting stuck in there. So the reason that we sift it is to get any any large bits of organic matter, any rocks, anything that's going to interfere with our results. So we get rid of that. Go on, get rid of that. So get your jar. Go on, fill your jar. About a third. Okay. That enough? That's more than enough. Okay, stop there. So, just over a third you've got, that's fine. Let's go. 
Are we okay. going to test it then? How am I going to test it? That's not exactly what I'm going to show you. So, I'll put this soil back. So, I've just put the soil back, level it out again, and, and the mulch can go back over the top. So, let's go and sort this. Um, let's, go, let's go and do this jar experiment. Come on. So, now I'm going to fill up each jar with water. And what we're going to try and aim to do is we're going to fill up as much as we can. We're going to leave about an inch of space at the top so we've got enough shaking space. So, how do you close that? Now, shake it properly. Now, I want you to shake that. Okay? Hold that. Give you all that. Just keep shaking it. Keep the lid tight and shake it. Okay, I'm going to give you some water as well. People could eat mud, this would be a milkshake. There we go. Gross. Now shake. Go on, shake. It would actually be a so, milkshake because it's not mud, not milk. I know. So we've got all of that shaking and every all of the solid matters suspended in the water. So what I'm going to do is we're going to leave this overnight and we're going to come back tomorrow. Normal soil is made up of uh, three distinct particles. So your sand, your silt and your clay. Sand is the biggest particle out of them all. And then followed by silt and then followed by clay, which is tiny compared to the rest. So what we should see is we should see three distinct layers. We'll analyse our results tomorrow once this has happened. <laughs> so it's five layers including the water so what we'll do is we'll analyze our results tomorrow anything that floats on the top you can disregard that we'll leave it like this and tomorrow we'll have a look at our results and then and then we'll give you um, an, update. an update then